Right, I am not the biggest fan of schools. I think that they, well, useful. There is like a bunch of stuff you're probably never going to use that you do learn. And it, they could do with retooling. Um, and I think it's a little, it's, it's a little bit, schools are a bit restrictive with, um, it is a lot like, um, if you don't, uh, like, learn by, you know, their methods, then you're pretty much screwed. And it pretty much just stays that way, and um, even into college, and at college, it gets better. But not by much. Um, but this, I just can't agree with most of what it's saying. Um, and this is crying. Sh I found this on Facebook, so I'll see if I can get a link for you. But it is just a crying shame because this has a lot of work being put into it. And, it, um, you know, it looks. It, the, the production quality is good, but what the what they're actually saying is here and there. Some of it's good, some of it I agree with, but for the most part, it's like uh, no. So Albert Einstein once said, "Everybody's a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree." It will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, today on trial we have modern day schooling. Glad you could come. Not only does he make fish climb trees, but also makes them climb down and do a 10 mile run. Tell me school, are you proud of the things you've done? Right, here's the thing. Um, example please. Like give me an example of school making a figuratively making a fish climb a tree climb back down and then do a hundred mile walk or run or whatever now school is meant to push you to achieve bigger and greater things um if you had asked me when i started school um how do i find the area of of uh, you know an object or uh, the radius i would just look at you just like But now it's easy, just uh, area, um, just time as, times length by width uh, to find the radius. Add all the sides together. Right? What's the other way round? I'm bad with words. Anyway, you know I I'm uh, infinitely better at maths now than when I started school. And. Sure, there are plenty of kids who aren't good at maths, but they still need to learn it. They still need... It's just like, it's not like you go to your first day of school and it's like, Oh, well, you're not good at maths, so we're not even going to try and teach you maths. You still need to try and learn maths, because it is an important part of what you need to do. Everything nowadays requires maths and ICT, pretty much. Like, day-to-day -day life. Um, you, uh, you need maths to work out what to... Um, you know how much all of your shopping comes together you need maths to budget you need maths to do all those things and you need maths and you do budgeting and work and uh, especially when you're the like or oh, manager of a shop you need to budget everything out so you know you need like I was never good at math uh, not maths art I was never good at that and I'm still not good at it and uh, English, not that good at English either. But uh, I still went to every English lesson. Heck, the only lesson I never went to is French, le speaking how to learn to speak French, and that's because I'm never going to France because they're all assholes over there. Um, and it, uh, um, it's just you. I still went to those lessons. I found English boring AF, but. I still went to them, I, and I and I am a hell of a lot better now at reading, writing, spelling than I used to be. Like when I when I first started English in schools, I would never put full stops in my sentences. Like 
If you were to read one of my sentences out, you before you finished my sentence, you would be on the floor gasping for air. And it, um, I used to do that thing where if I got to the end of the, end of the page and I was like in the middle of a word, I wouldn't just erase this half of the word and just start the next line. I would just like finish the word going down the side of the page. I don't do that anymore. I learnt to not do that. I've learnt, and I used to spell things how they sounded. So like school, I would spell it S C. Well, no, I would spell it S K O L or, or something like that. So, I wouldn't really say this is pushing a fish, you know, somebody to do something impossible. I'm saying this is pushing somebody to become better than they are. It's not like if they don't manage to climb the tree, they're just going to fail in life or the school punishes them somehow. It's just like they don't climb the tree, so it's just like, you know, at least they tried. If you don't try, then you're never going to succeed. Well, apart from in America. In America, you can get held back. I guess that's kind of a punishment, but... Yeah. Not really, like, end of the world. Unless you get held back several times, but... How often does that happen? Turning millions of people into robots, do you find that fun? Do you realize how... Because arts and crafts is turning people into robots. I mean, have we have we just forgotten that arts and crafts even exists? I mean, it's not my favorite subject. I mean, I liked building stuff, but I wasn't that good at it. I didn't enjoy it that much, and I would have been preferred to be in maths. I mean, call me a loser all you want, but I love maths. I was really good at it. Well, it's not like school tells them that they are stupid. It's not like school tells them that they are useless. It's usually bullies that do that, believe me, I know from experience. Um, and it, uh, it's just... Right, so the whole thing with this. Everybody is good at something. And the only person that is holding you back from doing something that you are good at is yourself. Usually you're just like, oh, I, I can't do it, I'm not even going to try. School, you know, pushes you to try those things. You know, it pushes you to grow your skill set and learn and develop as a human being. One of my biggest problems with school is school uniform. I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. Like, yeah, I get why um, school uniform exists. It's just like, if you take children out on a field trip, it's easier to identify them if they have school uniform on. Um, but... Uh, it is... Very, it just... It just does... Right. When you go into school and you just see all of the kids wearing the exact same thing, it just, it does seem rather, how shall I put it, emotionless, right? You just see kids that pretty much look all the same, just going from one class to the next, next and it is pretty... Yeah, like I said, I'm not a big fan of school uniform. But not all schools require it. He's an ancient institution that has outlived his usage, so your honor. This... An ancient institution that has outlived its usage. Oh yeah, because who needs maths? Am I right? Who needs to know what 1 plus 1 is or 10 plus 9? I mean, seriously. We have schools for a reason. You, who needs to learn how to nail a piece of wood to another piece of wood or paint a fence? Who needs to learn any of these fucking basic skills? Just, 
Just give them a hammer and nail and let them figure it out for themselves. I mean, I am sort of the kind of person who um, does like the slightly more hands-off approach to where you let them figure stuff out on their own and let them make mistakes and learn from their mistakes. But I'm not going to give a child a hammer and a nail, a bit of wood, and tell me tell them to make a fence. I, when they get out of school, I'd pay them to do that. Well, unless they were living in my house and I was just like, you live in this house, you build that fence. In your keep. To close my opening statement, and if I may present the evidence of my case, I will prove it. Proceed. Exhibit A. Here's a modern day phone. Recognize it? Here's a phone from 150 years ago. Big difference, mm -hmm. right? Stay with me. Here's a car from today. And here's a car from 150 years ago. That's a horse and right? cabbage, no, I can't. Here's a classroom of today. And here's a class we used 150 years ago. No, ain't that a shame. Oh yeah, they should ignore that 150 years ago there wouldn't have been arts and crafts. There wouldn't have been science lessons. There wouldn't, they probably wouldn't have even been in the PE. I mean, are you just going to ignore the years of fundamental lessons that are required through all out of school and you can continue through college just to prove, well, no, not even to prove, just to suit your narrative. Like, again, I don't like schools. I think they ne need, uh, uh, you know, another look at and reformat and retooling to make them better. But again, I'm not going to ignore, I'm not going to say that schools haven't changed in 150 years. Because they've changed a lot. And they've, and they've even implemented new technology that helps with learning. Also, a court going... <laughs> I, I know this is. I don't know if I'm. Is it, if this is supposed to be serious or a joke at this point. In literally more than a century, nothing has changed. You, you claim to progress. Again, arts and crafts, science, maths. You know, am I? Am I just? You know. You know, imagining that these are actually a thing in schools, and they don't, schools don't actually teach arts and crafts, maths and stuff, because they just seem to ignore it. Also, new technology, again, that helps people learn. Students for the future? But with evidence like that, I must ask, do you prepare students for the future or the past? I did a background check on... For the... I don't know how you could... Right. Are you saying that we... Well, there is history lesson, so we do know about the past. We do teach them about the past, but... I really don't get that. I don't really get that to think. Get that, I don't know. When you would let the record show that you were made to train people to work in factories, which explains why you put students in straight roles, nice and neat, tell them sit still, raise your hand if you want to speak, give them a short break to eat, and for eight hours a Okay, so. Raise a hand if they want to speak. This is not something that is unique to the West. It is, uh, um. It happened, you know. That also happens in other countries, and sometimes they snap their fingers. Yeah, you, you probably hear that. Um, and uh, the, it's just like the classroom. If you didn't have your hands up to, you know, have them speak, it would be total and utter chaos. Like, uh, you know, you'd have like just children talking when they're, they're not supposed to be talking about stuff they shouldn't be talking about. And then you'd have all the children there trying to show them, trying to uh, get the answer through, and it's just like, it's just chaotic, it would be chaotic. Oh. Um, and about um, sitting in lines, it's like, well, what you would you have them do sitting down? Like, would you have them sat on the ceiling? Hey, and... Again, college, we were, they weren't always sat in lines, like, and they had multiple different table layouts, like, some had a horseshoe layout, some had, um, several individual tables, uh, um, some were in lines, um, so, it's just like, they weren't, 
you know, they they're not always playing like. And again, uh, they complain about rates and things, and it's just like, why is your complaint here? Like, what would you rather have us do instead? Like, just not teach them at all and just leave them to do whatever the flip they want. Again, that's not going to work. When they go out into the world, they're just going to not know anything and the, the, the world's going to be worse off than the last generation. Um, and the, the dinners and breaks, that's actually another thing that's changed within the last 100 year, 150 years. Because that, uh, believe it or not, um, breaks and, uh, and, well, dinners were probably a uniform thing, but breaks weren't, um, you know, a uniform thing, thing for school. Uh, so when they, you know, at least in the Tudor age, and, you know, you know, they, you know, they just weren't in a uniform thing. And it wasn't until, I don't know, but uh, it wasn't until, like, sometime uh, after schools were invented that they became a uniform thing. Um, and raising them to work in factories, um, no, right, you may start, right, I don't know about today, but, um, when my mother, you know, when she, her first job was in a factory, my grandfather's first job was a boat, was on a boat, fishing. What do both of them have in common? They both went to school. Now, if school really just prepares children for working in factories, then how come my grandfather was a fisherman and my mother worked in a factory, yet yeah, they both went to schools? Another thing, factories have not been around nearly as long as schools have. Factories have only been around since the indu Industrial Revolution. Well, the factories as we know them, like, there would have been places where a lot of people work to make stuff, but not traditional factories with large machinery. And generally, the kids who worked in those factories did not go to school. They were generally uneducated, and, had, um, you know, it's in the Victoria area, they were generally uneducated. And a lot of them died because they were uneducated. Like, if you want to see what happens when you put kids to work without it, sending them to school, just look at Victoria, London, sending their, ki sending their kids to work in factories. A lot of them died. Like, do you want that in the modern era, where the so smallest mistakes, mistake in like a, a power plant could wipe out the power for an entire city? School doesn't, does not at all encourage children to compete to get good grades. Like seriously, in school the, the people get, who get good grades are generally bullied and outcast. Like seriously, if anything you should be complaining that bully is a, and dis, in, disincentivize getting good grades. So what, you grade, one system of grading is used for two separate things. Your point being, what, well, we should just come up with a totally separate um, grading system for both of them and then have a, and have a people learn, um, learn the both systems. The reason why we use grading for more than one thing is so, so we don't have to learn a, a different grading system for each individual thing. And it makes it easier for the consumer. And, uh, yeah. Another thing. I'm pretty sure we use that same grading system for more than just children's education and meat. Like, if you look it, if you look it up, you could probably find, like, hundreds of other things we use that grading system for. Robot. Did the person making this 
not have any understanding of what a zombie is and what a robot is. If you don't, here's a, two, here's a difference. A robot is an entirely inorganic uh, being uh, with varying levels of AI that, uh, you know, walks around and can do stuff. A zombie is a reanimated corpse of a person. Those things do not mesh! That is square peg, round hole. I can do a square with my other hand, but square peg, round hole, dude. And I've got an ad. Um, creatively, arts, and crafts. Heck, media. We have an entire, an entire, you know, thing you can do in college called media and ICT, which I did for a little while. But uh, no, let's not talk about that. Um, and uh, you know, I would I still would have preferred to do media and maths and all media and ICT or science. I would have loved to do uh, be in a proper science lab and blow myself up. Um, but, it's the thing, you know, you're saying that they don't encourage creativity, yet they have an arts and, arts and crafts class. The art is pretty much the entire definition of uh, creativity. But do you want to know what is the biggest uh, you know, argument against uh, that? Indie developers for video games. They have grown up with school. Now you think, oh, well if they grow up, you know, grew up in school, according to this, they would be the most, they would just be uncreative robots, slash zombies. Well no, they are so creative in fact, that Nintendo are supporting them, giving them money. And a lot of people say, yeah, some of the stuff that come out of the indie developers nowadays are some of the most creative, fun, games you can play. So how does school, if school is really this bad, how does it create stifle creativity? Like seriously, um, IBX Toy Cat, um, he started YouTube early on while he was still in college and at the, at the time his channel was unique and creative. People who study brains for a living and the human body? Parents! Who would you trust more to tell you about the inner workings of somebody's brain? If you said parents, then get off this channel. If you said uh, the people who literally study this shit, then congratulations, you get a gold star. I'm surprised you haven't brought that up in this video. And you were only 2 minutes 20 uh, out of three, about three minutes forty. So I don't know. Anyway, so brain, human brains. Uh, I don't know about the claim that you will never find two human brains that look the same. Um, but I do know that human brains will form definitely cosmetically. Like you, you can take you can take two humans and no two human will ever be exactly the same. But you can't. You're. Yeah, what I think you're asking here is uh, for school to um, create a custom um, like learning environment for each person. You can't exactly do that because then you would have to segregate each person and that would be horrible for their people skills. And then not to mention the amount of teachers you would have to employ, not to mention the fact that you would have to know exactly the perfect way to teach each, each person. And even then, to even though that would be a waste of time because you could probably find a, a group of people who would learn more or less the same. Like, one might be a bit slower than the other, but, you know, I'm, that still counts as a difference. The differences may be minute to, to the point where it's not worth, you know, even evaluating them. Um, and it would just be a massive waste of money and time. Hats, 
I do agree that um, schools are a bit too uniform to the point, you know, with how they teach children to the point where if you are more hands-on learner like myself, you pretty much do get screwed over by it a bit. Um, and, it, uh, yeah, I do think it is a bit too uniform. That is one bit I can agree with it. I'm sorry, but if a doctor prescribed the exact same medicine to all of his patients, the results would be tragic. These two things. Now, this, this is a bit that I stopped at, and this is pretty much what made me make this video. Those two things are nowhere near comparable. Like, sweet jeez. You, like, if you have, like, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm more of a hands on learner. I uh, usually learn by doing and not being told what to do. And even I can learn from school. I, I, you know, I've learnt English. I've learnt, uh, um, well not really geography because I'm still horrible at that. Um, but I've learnt, you know, things and I, things I could not even comprehend before, you know, doing like uh, homophone similes. Um, you know, all that lovely stuff. You know, it, and it, uh, so doing that did not kill me. But if the doctor gave me the wrong medicine, that could. Like, you're acting like putting children through school, even if the school, you know, if the school doesn't uh, customise it around them, it's going to kill them. It's not, it's going to make them unhappy at uh, worst, but it's not going to kill them. What's going to kill them is probably the bullying because. Right, I want to say this now, my biggest problem with schools is the bullying. The teachers have no power to stop the bullying, basically, because well, the only power they have to have is to suspend the children. Do you really think a bully is going to care if they get suspended? And do you really think a bully's parents is going to care? No, they didn't think so. Now, when I describe it as tragic, uh, as a, um, a doctor prescribing everybody the same medic medication as tragic, I would, uh, I would, uh, I would call it genocide, pretty much, because you'd be killing everybody. Pre well, not well. I'm gonna say everybody who went to him for medicine, and I, um, I would uh, relate it more to a mass shooting. Sick or die. Again, they're not comparable. Again, medicine, getting the wrong medicine can kill you. Getting the wrong form of education will bore you and probably not be as effective as uh, the proper way of educating you. But again, we can't just uh, say, oh, well, you're not good at maths, so we're not even going to try and teach you maths. You have to try to teach them maths so they can you, at, least, at least use the basic from the ma mentals of maths to get, get to, you know, to be able to do, live their basic lives. Um, and heck, who knows, they might even become really good at maths and then go on to major in maths and go on to revolutionise or something using maths. Like, nobody is good at anything without trying. Like, there are some people who are naturals at stuff. Like, I was a natural in maths. I, I could get maths like that. Like, but in, uh, you know, in English, I was horrible at it. It took me years to learn anything, but I learned stuff. It took time, but I learned them. I uh, grasped the concepts. I learned it. I grew as a person. Ho horrific. Okay. 
So you describe people as being given the, the wrong medication as tragic. When that could kill a shit ton of people. But, oh no! Kids getting the wrong form of education. That's horrific! Even though it's not going to kill anybody. Is it criminal to give somebody the wrong form of education? Again, the diff basically the difference. The without going into too too much specifics, because that would be a person to person basis. There's two major groups of how to how to learn: hands-on learning and basically just being told what to do, you know, and then just processing the information by being told. The worst that can come from being giving the wrong one of these, like I was, is it takes longer for you to learn that thing. Now, call it a waste of time, maybe, but horrific. No, that's like I said, that's a better description of um, people dying as they get the wrong bloody medication. Employees. Employ teachers. Right. Teachers. Uh so you're just like, oh yeah, you can't just generalize all children, but oh yeah, all te teachers that you treat all te teachers are all teachers say no. Teachers, just like students, are on a base by pace you know, case by case basis, sorry. You have the really good teachers that are really understanding and really nice and listen to the children and know that try their best to help. And then you have the shitty teachers that couldn't give a shit and uh, that are mardy asses so that uh, just like you do this and you know, you know, are basically sticks in the mud. Underpaid. Hmm. Again, you can't equivalent this to every school. Like, you have different schools that are run by different people that think different things. And each different one thinks that a different uh, teacher deserves a different type of pay. Now, this one school may think like a teacher deserves a um, me medium wage. That's right, you know. And another school may think a, te a teacher with the exact same qualifications deserves, um, you know, high high amount of rate of pay. That is a school by school cases, pretty much. Um, unless you have like multiple schools that are owned by the same person. Are they owned by are, are they owned by individuals or are they owned by the government? No, the government's fund. Well, again, you have, you also have government funded uh, schools, and then you have uh, private schools who both have different pays for their teachers. Look, uh, some teachers do on, go on strike. I've seen this before. It is rare, but it's not always about pay. You know, there's multiple reasons why they go on strike. And when they do go on strike, it's, see, it's usually seen as a big thing, and it, uh, they usually get their way. And, it, um, you know, they are usually quite well respected. Like, there are certain jobs that you can say and you on a date and, you know, you'll probably get whoever you're going out with. Teacher. Doctor. Firefighter. Off the top of my head, those three, you know, those are... Those three are some of the most attractive jobs because, you know, they are some of the best paying and some of the most stable. Unless you're a doctor and you just prescribe the people the wrong medicine and then they, a shit ton of people die. But again, if teachers are unhappy with their pay, their union will usually go on strike and then it's usually fixed there. 
pretty quickly. <laughs> No. Right. No, 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 And that is only a fraction of the amount of no this is. Right. You know, people who pay taxes. There it should pretty much be everybody watching this video. Do, will you pay your teacher, your English teacher, the same amount as a brain surgeon? No! Those two are drastically different things. A doctor requires a lot more work and education and uh, the higher degrees to get than a teacher. Um. This um, YouTuber, Grey Day Under A, um, he actually went for a job interview to be a maths teacher, and he was a high school dropout. Now, if a high school dropout can get an interview to be a maths teacher, what does that tell you about the uh, um, qualification level for a maths teacher, or a teacher in general? Not that high, really. Like, if you do good maths or good English, then you're probably going to get the job. I mean, if you have a better qualification, then you get better pay, but... Pardon me? You know, a, becoming a maths or English teacher, you know, it's just the same as any other job. You go for an interview, um, they ask you for your qualifications, and you're just like, okay, here's my qualifications, and in grade A under A is... Uh, not grade A under A. What was his name again? The odd one's out, sorry. The odd one's out. Actually, I think Grady is actually a teacher, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. I know he has a job. Anyway, the odd one's out. Um, he, in his uh, case, he actually had a maths question. And while they buggered it up because, you know, not, it's in his video, but he had a maths question to prove how, you know, good he was at explaining and working out a maths problem. And, uh, the, you know, th that's what, you know, and then you, they, they, they take all that in account. So I would not pay it my teacher as much as my brain surgeon. And yes, a brain surgeon is a doctor. Like do most doctors will have, you know, a higher, like le there is, if you take any teacher and any pretty much any doctor, they pr most likely will not have the same qualifications. Nowhere near. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll pay teachers as much as a doctor if you let one of them have do a heart surgery on you. Yeah, no, you're not going to do that, are you? Because you're not stupid. You know that they don't know how to do heart surgery because they're not qualified for it. My phone's decided to turn itself off. Oh, don't tell me the battery died. I'll check this with this charger. Hold on, I'll be back in a minute. So, um, my phone has some charging now, and I looked for the video, but I can't find it again, so I can't, you know, um, you know, continue this video. Now, if you've seen this video and can give, send me a link to it, then by all means send me a link to it and I'll do a part two. I was thinking about doing a part two anyway when I, um, you know, looked back at the video to see if I could actually get the name, but I couldn't see because my hand was moving so it was a bit blurry. Um, I, was, I was already thinking about making a part two because this video is getting a bit long. So I'll just end it off here with a few final words. Schools, the big problem with schools is school uniform in my opinion. Um, it, they don't have nearly as much hands-on learning as they do 
you know, verbal based learning, you're just like telling them what to do, and it uh, um, is a bit too uniform from time to time. Um, and it, um, schools have a really bad bullying problem. I miss that stuff online nowadays, so uh, maybe I'm just a bit behind the times. Back in my day, we didn't bully people online, we bullied them face to face. We were real men assholes, not these spineless coward assholes you see nowadays that you that to anonymously bully you online. Yeah, anyway, um, yeah, so, um, and but the main my main problem with this video that I've, you know that I've seen of it is it's lean it goes too far to ex extreme where it seems like they want us to just completely abandon schools and just leave kids to figure everything out by themselves. And last time we did that was Victoria, London where we put children in factories and they died. Yeah, no, we're not, I don't want my people to repeat that. Thank you very much. Like, yeah, no, we've done it once before and I don't want to, you know, I don't want us to do it again. I know. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow for, well, actually, what day is it? Oh, it's actually Sunday, so this is going to be like an extra video, I guess. Huh. Yeah, so this is just like a, a video. Yeah, because if you know, the first of every month, I take a bit of a break off of YouTube. Uh, but this just got my blood boiling, this video, and I forgot to even check what uh, data was. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the... Next video after my one week break, which it is currently the second, and you know, my one week break will be on Saturday the 8th of this month. Okay, so I'll see you guys then. Bye bye. Or if I get, or someone really peeves me off before then. Bye bye.